Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Casper Site. How the devil are you, mate? Today, we've got a brand new channel. The one and only Mr. Ballon. Absolutely, Lutely, mate. Okay? Mr. Ballon has got 4 million subscribers. 4 million subscribers, please. You know when somebody has got 4 million subscribers, you know their work is epic. All right? Anyway. Talking about subscribers, make sure you go over to his channel, subscribe, and do the thing. All right, and as always, the link is in the description. Anyway, this one, mate, okay, this dude is a storyteller. He's a storyteller on another level. And this today, his story is about the real exorcism of Emily Rose. Now, we've probably all seen the film, right? No? <laughs> go and see it. The horrifying case of Annalise Michael, right? So basically, I've seen the movie, bloody brilliant, okay, really good movie, but I, I'm uneducated when it comes down to the real story behind it. So I'm looking forward to this, mate. So anyway, buckle up, because this is going to go to another level. Without further ado, die diddly day. Let's do this. Shh. One of the most terrifying movies I have ever seen has got to be The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Bloody good. What really made it scary was that it was based on a true story. The true story of Annalise Michelle, who was a 23-year-old girl living in Germany in the 70s, who was apparently possessed by demons. And there's a lot of audio recordings and some pretty incredible first-hand testimony of what happened to this poor girl. There's one scene in particular that while it is a dramatization of what happened to Annalise, it is certainly an accurate portrayal of what did ultimately physically happen to Annalise Michelle, and it is one of the most hair -raising. The scene and actual audio from the real exorcism included in this video. Yes! Mate, okay, let's go. Amazing, horrifying scenes in movie history, in my opinion. It is just downright disturbing. And so today, I'm going to be looking at the real story that that movie is based on, which is, of course, The Exorcism of Annalise Michelle. Was but it Michelle? We... Of, mate, did I say Michael? Yeah, whatever, mate. I said Michael, right? It's, it's, it's Michelle, okay? Michelle. Yeah, I see. I see Michelle now. Okay. I saw, I, 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 I saw an A in there, all right? We get into today's story. If you are a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, well, then you've come to the right channel because that is literally all I do. And I upload three, sometimes four times every week. So if that's of interest to you, if you could, please... Mate, did a shadow bastard just walk past him then? Did a shadow bastard just literally walk past him? Gently eviscerate the like button and then subscribe and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dive in. Annalise Michel was born in 1952 in Western Germany to a fiercely religious family. Devout Catholics who believed in some of the more extreme elements of the, of the Catholic faith. Now, one of the things that they believed in and, and certainly pushed on to Annalise and her siblings was this idea that sin could not be atoned on your own. It would require other people effectively sacrificing on your behalf for you to be absolved of your sin. And so Annalise and her siblings would be instructed by her parents to, at times in the winter, sleep on the hardwood floor uh, in order to repent for sinners that can't repent for their sins on their own. Sorry, right there, I would be like, uh, what are you on about, mum? What are you bloody on about, mum? How is sleeping on a fucking a wooden floor, a cold wooden floor, in the winter gonna, gonna stop the bad, bad bloody entities entering me? Like, you're off your head. There's some weird people out there, mate. There's some real weird people out there, all right? Christ. And so she'd be laying on the floor in the middle of the winter thinking that what she was doing was saving other people from their own sin. In 1969, Annalise would have her first seizure. She was at school. Fucking hell. She suddenly started seizing up and convulsing and her classmates would later tell investigators and her family that it was almost like she'd entered into a trance-like state while she was having this seizure. 
Uh, and then as soon as the seizure had ended and she was done convulsing, she snapped out of the trance-like state. It what? wasn't until a year later when Annalise had another seizure in the middle of the night. She had this convulsion and her parents come in and she's in this trance-like state and she's wet the bed and then she snaps out of it and she doesn't know what happened. It wasn't until this second seizure that the family actually sought medical attention. They actually went to a neurologist. Okay, good. I was just going to say, I was I was expecting them to be like, she, she's possessed! Get the priest! You know, but no, they did the logical thing. Take her to the belly doctors, mate. Okay, good stuff. That neurologist would tell Annalise and her family that what she was suffering from was something called temporal lobe epilepsy, where, you know, amongst a, a litany of horrible side effects, a few of the more significant ones are serious auditory and visual hallucinations, a loss of awareness, and intense mental state. So Annalise was oh prescribed my. medication by this neurologist to try to combat this temporal lobe epilepsy, but it didn't seem to do anything. And in fact, her seizures and convulsions and this trance-like state she would go into during the seizures, it only persisted and intensified. And it got to a point where Annalise and her family believed the best thing for her to do would be to go to a psychiatric hospital where the staff there was better equipped to handle what was happening to her. It's strange that, like, from a from a family that is sort of, you know, so forceful when it comes to sort of like, you know, repenting and, and like evil and stuff like that, getting her to sleep on a bloody cold wooden floor in the winter and stuff like that, to, you know, project like good stuff and help other people and things like that did actually go to the doctors and like you know chose that avenue like normally you would think somebody that strong in like religion would automatically think okay this is not good this is something to do with like the devil and stuff like that but it's strange so it's quite a logical family and so she checks in willingly and they start experimenting with different drugs and nothing seems to work and in fact her condition only gets worse she starts having more seizures and more convulsions and she starts having a regular visual hallucination. Oh God. Whether she's having a seizure or not, everywhere she looked, if she looked at anybody in the face, their face would- <laughs> Fucking hell, mate! Jay! It would become demonic. Like it would be a demon's face that would look at her and say, you're going to rot in hell. Oh, fucking hell. Oh God. Mate, I'm not being joking, mate. Like, stories, I, I, I get really, it, like, engrossed in these stories, mate. Because my imagination goes fucking mental. And seeing that belly picture there in front of me, holy shitballs, man. What is that? Baraka from fucking... Not Baraka. Is it Baraka? Yeah. Baraka from bloody, uh... Mortal Kombat. Jesus, mate. I, 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 um, I know somebody um, who, who suffers with epilepsy, okay? And I, I, I lived with them for quite some time in, this, in like a shared house. And he used to have like seizures once, twice a week. And he told me that every time he, like, he, he was having these like seizures, like these epileptic fits, whenever he saw people's faces, their eyes used to be black. Oh, mate, it fuck. Oh man, I, I, I feel so sorry for people that go through that sort of shit, mate. And so she began not being able to look at people in the face and she would tell the nurses and doctors like with her head down about these demon faces she was seeing and it was the first time she began espousing this idea that she was in fact possessed by demons. In fact, six demons by her. Cat. Six of them? When she passed on that information to her family that she believed she was possessed, she and her family believed that the psychiatric hospital was not enough and in fact modern medicine was really not enough to handle what was happening to her that they would need to search for help outside of medicine and so they turned to the catholic church wow. initially all okay. the clergy that annalise and her family approached to, to try to help her with the situation rejected her request and they said you need to seek medical attention this is not something we can help you with not knowing where to turn her family is kind of at a loss at the same time annalise's condition really nosedives i mean it was already pretty bad it gets a lot worse she began doing 400 plus squats every day like compulsively doing squats then she began going under the table periodically and not coming out 400 squats huh Maximum legs, please! 
for two days barking like a dog the entire time without sleeping. She began- That's actually quite horrifying, right? right? Okay? Imagine just seeing your daughter or anybody that you know just sitting there like that, 400 fucking squats, looking at you like that. Not, not, looking, not looking at your face because I think your bloody, your face is a demon, right? And then, then bark out like, wow! Mate, that's just so, such an upsetting story. And go into corners of the house and finding spiders and eating them off the ground. What the fuck? She would scurry over to the fireplace and pull coal out of the fireplace and eat the coal. I mean, she was really losing it. Finally, the family located a priest named Ernst Alt who believed she was possessed and that she was not epileptic. And he was willing to petition the local bishop to allow the Catholic Church to perform an exorcism. And so that bishop granted permission for a local priest. But I'm freaking out, mate. This story is freaking me right out. Priest Arnold Renz to perform an exorcism with the full endorsement of the Catholic Church. Over the next 10 months, Renz would conduct 67 exorcisms of Annalise. And through these exorcisms, Annalise would reveal that she was being possessed by six demons. Lucifer, Cain, Judas, Nero, Fleischmann, and Adolf Hitler. Fair shout to Mr. Ballin here, mate. Like, maximum investigation, please, mate. Like, he's gone fully into this bloody background of this. Like, he's done some research, right? Look at you! Mr. Research. And so all of these voices, these demonic voices that were coming out of Annalise, they were picked up on audio recording during the exorcisms. And in the movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, the most iconic scene in the movie is the, the demon scene where they show off these voices coming out of, in the movie it's Emily Rose, but it's supposed to represent Annalise Michelle. And they do a fantastic job showing what that might have looked like during the exorcism. So take a look. And Fucking even the horse is tripping out, mate. Christ almighty, we gotta see that again. We gotta see that again. I want you to take that scene you just watched of Emily Rose being possessed by these demons and think about that as you listen to the actual audio recordings of Annalise Michelle during one of her many exorcisms. Oh Christ. Ja, ich will schon auch für die anderen Leute, damit die nicht näher kommen und so. Aber dass die sind so schlimm ist und so grausam und so furchtbar. Nee. Oh my god, what? Like it's not even her voice, man. Fucking hell, look at the eyes, mate. Look at the eyeballs. Oh, man, that's fucking horrible, that is. That's fucking horrible, man. Oh, guys, man! Shit! It, sound, it doesn't even sound human, like, you know? Like, that would rip your bloody throat to pieces trying to do that. Kapiert? <laughs> Oh my god, look at the state of her, mate. Look at the fucking state of her. Look, man. Initially, the exorcisms seemed to make things better for Annalise. She got to a place where the seizures and convulsions and trance-like states and, and odd behavior were so few and far between that she actually re-enrolled in university and was even able to attend church, but it didn't last. In the spring of 1976, oh, Annalise- Wonder what happened when she went into church, eh? 
That surely that would have surely going back into church would help shit, right? You know? It'd be funny if you go into church, right? God's at God's house and he he's gonna be looking at you. He's like, oh shit. Annalise is not right. Let's help her out. Wouldn't you think? Cases, conditions, and seizures and odd behavior came back tenfold. And she began becoming violent with her family members to where they couldn't even be around her without being attacked by her. But when she was left on her own, she would harm herself. She stopped eating, saying that the demons were not allowing her to eat. And all day long, she would stand up and then drop to her knees to pray and then get back up and drop to her knees to pray, breaking both her kneecaps and tearing the tendons in her knees. Oh, what the hell? I didn't know all this, mate. I didn't know. All How did he get all this information? Which seemingly did not phase her. But still, her family believed that what she needed was religious intervention not medical intervention. Also, Annalise felt the same way, but some might say that she was not in a position to make that decision, that she had lost her ability uh, to make that decision. But either way, they continued with the exorcisms. The final exorcism of Annalise took place on June 30th, 1976. And while Annalise did submit willingly to this exorcism, she was incredibly frail. She weighed under 100 pounds. Oh, wow, man. And by the following morning on July 1st, 1976, she had passed away due to dehydration and malnutrition. Oh no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that she died. Oh, mate. Oh, shit. She was only 23 years old. Oh. After her death, Annalise's story was so sensational that it grabbed headlines all over Germany and people were clamoring to learn more about how this could happen. That she was, you know, apparently possessed and then died after all these exorcisms. You know, why wasn't there medical intervention? There was so many questions. And so ultimately what happened is her parents were charged with negligent homicide, but were actually not given a jail sentence because at the time in Germany, they ruled that the parents had already suffered enough, so they did not serve any- Hang on, the parents took her to the hospital? When that couldn't be re resolved, then she took it to the priest. What else can they fucking do, mate? The all time. And there were two priests, one of them being Renz, who were charged with negligent manslaughter and they were sentenced to six months in jail. That was later suspended. To this day, people are absolutely oh split down the middle about what actually happened to Annalise Michelle. Was it possession or was it like the neurologist said, a form of epilepsy or was it something else? I, I think I, I think uh, I think it would be more like, you know, something going on with the brain there. I think, you know. <sighs> yeah, I, I think it's more about. Something like pressure in some part of the brain or something like that. It's just really messed her up. And furthermore, you know, was psychiatric treatment or was modern medicine doing enough to help her? Or were they failing just as much as the exorcisms ultimately failed? It's a question that to this day, people are really unsure how to answer. Her gravesite has become sort of like a, a monument for many churches around Europe. They will go and basically make the pilgrimage to her gravesite to pay their respects to a girl that they believe in some way died for their sins. So what do you think this was? Was this demonic My. possession or was this epilepsy? I don't know. I, I mean, like, I don't think it was. I mean, why epilepsy? I know that the doctor said it was like some sort of form of epilepsy, right? But back then, did they have the, the, the test that they could do like nowadays, you know? check in it sound, seems to me like you, you, you know you get these like personalities like disorders and stuff like that when there's something going on in the brain or like hormones or something like that maybe there's a pressure on some sort of the brain that's why she's like hallucinating seeing like people's faces going crazy um uh she had a religious background anyway so she would have known the names of like certain demons uh 
Like, I, I, I'm the type of person that tries to think more realistic. I say realistic. That's the wrong word, really. I try to think of things in more of a sort of like, um, I suppose, more, more of a medical side of, of approach, you know? Like, by default, I don't generally go to sort of, you know, the spiritual side of things, like the, the religious side of things. Because over time... Medical science proves, like, it counters the, the religious side of things over and over and over and over and over again. Like, literally, physically seeing brains not working correctly, you know, physically seeing chemicals in the body, uh, uh, you know, that aren't quite balanced. You know, these sort of things tend to override the, the, the spiritual and... Um, you know the religious side of things yeah and one thing i always like i always think is quite strange is that usually when you hear about um people that are possessed and things like that you know it usually happens to people that are really religious why is that surely if you're really religious you're more protected from these things right that's just my Right? Do you know what I mean? If you've got God by your side, surely that's like a protection. But it seems like these things that happen to people that are really religious. So it's a bit of a weird one, man. It's a weird one, but it's bloody good. Or was it something else? And how do you think they should have treated this case? I mean, obviously not the good. medication she was on was not making it any better. But mm. at the same time, the exorcisms didn't seem to do much better either. So how do you treat something like this? Let me know in the comments what you think and I'll do my best to respond to as many as I possibly can. All right, that's gonna do it guys. If you were interested in this story and like this type of content, if you would please gently eviscerate the like button. And I've done it, mate, I've done it already. Cause you're a bloody legend. Then subscribe to this channel, turn on all post notifications so you can get the three to four weekly uploads that happen on this channel every week. If you wanna get in touch with me, you can hit me up on Instagram. My handle is johnballin416. I'm also very active on TikTok where my handle is Mr. Ballin as well. That's going to do it, guys. Until next time, see ya. Cheers, John. There you go, mate. That was Mr. Ballin. How damn good was that? The real exor exorcism of Emily Rose, a horrifying case of Annalise Michelle. It's Michelle, not Michael. I'm sorry. I didn't... <laughs> right? Whatever, mate. Anyway, I hope I didn't upset anybody of you, uh, any of you, with my, my own personal views on these things. Uh, it's just my own personal view. It's my thoughts. It's just, I don't beat around the bush, mate. All right? I just basically say as it is. And hopefully that's what you like about it. Anyway, if you like the video, please leave a little like. And if you're new to this channel, how about subscribing? And I'll see you on the next one. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.